Hi guys, my name is Sabine and I honestly don't know why I'm recording a video right now. It is almost 8.30 in the evening, the lighting is really bad, I have a super sweaty face, but I still wanted to record this video. Oh my god, I look so bad. So today I'm here to show you guys the best books that I've read in 2020 until so far. that the pronunciation gods are gonna bless me today while recording this video so we can get this like filmed really really quickly so that the lighting will be kind of okay and that I don't have to do that much editing because I'm a lazy <laughs> Let's just get into it and start off with my first book that I want to talk about. By the way, these are not really in any order in particular. These are just my top five and I'm gonna show them to you. So first of all, I have The Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. I listened to this book on a script and fell absolutely in love with it. So we follow this black queer gay teen and he really deals with searching for his identity and he's having quite some struggles with that and how his family responds response to him being gay, but also he finds a really wonderful passion when he goes to university and that is drag queen and like drag race I should say and he loves performing as a drag queen. This is a novel written in verse which was really interesting but because I listened to it as an audiobook I didn't really notice it but it was so incredibly beautiful. This story touched me so much and I need to get a physical copy of this book but I'm trying to put myself on a book buying ban with the emphasis on trying because ever since I said I was gonna be on a book buying ban, I have already bought like three more books. So like, who am I even kidding? I love to see our main characters like growth from being a child up until he went to uni. You really like experience everything with him and his whole story is so incredibly touching. And I think everyone should read this and it deals with so many amazing topics that you should definitely check out. Then I have two nonfiction books about feminism. Both are by Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie. So we have We Should All Be Feminists and Dear Iawele or A Feminist manifesto in 15 suggestions. Again, listen to these both via script as an audiobook and they were so wonderful to listen to when I was just walking outside and I was also having a very informative afternoon <laughs> because I was listening to some amazing nonfiction work about the topic of feminism, which I really enjoy. Shimamanda does such an amazing job at explaining feelings towards feminism, but also like shining a light upon intersectional. Am I saying that correctly? And I think that if you want to have a quick but really informative read about said subject, definitely check out Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie's work. It is so amazing but I definitely need to check out more of Shimamanda's work because I think I will love it so incredibly much. Okay on number three I finally have a physical copy to show you and that is definitely Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I actually picked this book up for like a themed reading vlog which didn't happen or at least still hasn't happened yet. I don't know whether I will still make it. Six of Crows is a super well-known book in the book community. This is book one in a YA fantasy duology, but it does not feel like YA. The characters, they say that they are like 17 and 18, but they read as if they are somewhere at the beginning of their 20s, a new adult story disguised as a YA. And in this book, we follow six kind of like outcast characters with like a troubled backstory, which by the way are super super interesting and heartbreaking and they have to work together to perform this really cool heist. I also have read Crooked Kingdom. I don't know if you can see it is like right here but that's definitely not one of my favorite reads of 2020. It was still really good but not as good as Six of Crows because oh my god this book was amazing. The action was there but most importantly what I loved and what a lot of people in this community especially love about this book is the characters and my favorites of this like Grisha verse universe <laughs> are definitely Jasper and Nina. Jasper is so funny and witty. I can by the way show you the gorgeous artwork in this book which made me fall in love with Jasper even more because Look at him. He is super funny and really charming, but also my other favorite character is Nina. I love Nina so much and I think we would have the most wonderful time spending our day in Ketterdam just eating Stroopwafels because the world that we kind of follow these characters in mainly takes place in Ketterdam, which is inspired by Amsterdam and I'm from the Netherlands, so 
<laughs> and I loved it like so much I was constantly on the edge of my seat after every single chapter and I loved the heist aspect of this story so I should definitely read more like heist stories and I always love that in like movies and video games as well and I'm so glad I read it this year it was so unexpected though that I picked it up but I loved every single second of it and another book that kept me on the edge of my seat at the end of every single chapter another one of my favorite reads of 2020 until so far and that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Oh my god, you guys. I think if you have seen my July wrap-up, you've heard me talk about this book and I'm <laughs> fangirling so incredibly much. <laughs> this is the July and August pick for the book club that I'm co-hosting together with Leonie from the Book Leo and we are hosting the World Readers Book Club. This is an adult fantasy that is inspired by Chinese history, I believe around like the 1950s if I'm saying that correctly, and it is also heavily inspired by the Opium Wars. Our main character Rin, at the start of the story she is attending the Keiju test, which is a very strict, very difficult test and she comes from a quite poor family so her chances of passing the test are really low. However, of course, she passes it and she gets into one of the most elite, one of the most pristine military academies at Senegard where she is going to train to become one of like the warriors for her country Nikara and there has always been some kind of like danger looming over their country again because there have been two wars already called the Poppy Wars and like the danger the tension of a third war starting is looming over their country. So in part one, we mainly follow Rin attending the military academy and I enjoyed that aspect of the story so much. And from part two on, this story gets a whole lot more political and gets more into of like the war aspect, but also the gods in this world play a really, really big role. And if you love Avatar The Last Airbender and I also think Mulan, this is a book that you should definitely pick because this book <laughs> gave me those vibes like so so bad especially if you kind of love like the Fire Nation and Zuko and stuff like that this is the book for you I guess I am currently in my rewatch of Avatar The Last Airbender I am in the middle of season two but ah it is a brutal fantasy I believe you would classify it as a grim dark fantasy I am not the best when it comes to like classifying books into genres but it is very dark very intense there are a lot of different trigger warnings such as racism and rape just like we put a whole list of trigger warnings on our Twitter just know that it is a very intense book and there were a lot of times where I couldn't believe what was happening to our main character or that I couldn't believe what our main character was actually doing I cannot wait to pick up The Dragon Republic, which is book two, but look at the size of this one. But because this is a hardcover, it's just so intimidatingly big. And I know that The Burning God, which is book three, comes out in November. So let's see if I can finish this trilogy this year, but definitely planning on starting this ginormous brick of a book very soon. And then last but not least, I wrote like a list of like my best books and on the top it says everything by Alice Oseman. So this is everything that I have by Alice Oseman. I'm only missing like one or two small novellas by her, but I've discovered Alice Oseman this year and guys, I'm so, so glad. <laughs> I didn't really love Solitaire, but this is her first book. So if you are new to her, I don't recommend reading this one, but I mean, it wasn't too bad, but it's just not my fave. I still need to read I Was Born For This, so I'm so excited. I'm kind of saving this one for last because I just, I don't want to have read all of her books. I think that the way that you can kind of describe her novels is that they are YA contemporary novels and a lot of the characters in her novels are queer and so many different sexualities are represented in her books. Her most recent release and my last read book is Loveless by her and this book features an aromantic, asexual main character, which I have never Ever read a book with a main character who has that sexuality so that was really interesting also the kind of like university experience that Georgia has I can relate to that so much I also read the whole Heartstopper comic graphic novel trilogy this year I even made a whole reading vlog with that and this is a heartwarming graphic novel series about two boys who meet and who fall in love in the first book we get introduced to them so we have Charlie who is openly gay and Nick who in this book 
book will kind of figure things out a bit about his sexuality. Book two is definitely my favorite. So cute and so heartwarming and I probably like cried from happiness I think from this book and book three gets a little bit more deeper into stuff. It deals with some mental health issues as well. It is just amazing and I believe there are gonna be five volumes but don't quote me on that. And then last but definitely not least I have Radio Silence by her. Unfortunately I have this really ugly cover. Well it's not that ugly but I don't love people on the front of book covers. I'm kind of like wanting to buy the matching cover for like the rest of the books that I just showed you but I gotta remember that book buying van. This story follows Frances and she is kind of like a study machine. She's so focused on her grades and studying and going to university but besides that she doesn't really have that many hobbies except listening to this podcast called Universe City. Do you know? Do you see the pun there? I think it's so clever. And then she meets this boy in school who actually, I believe, if I remember correctly, lives across her street. And his name is Alad. I constantly said a lad, but I think it's Alad. You figure out really early on in the book, so it's not really a spoiler, that he is the creator of this podcast. And this is not a love story that is clearly stated very early on in the beginning of this book. This book focuses on their friendship and Frances kind of trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life after high school. And if I would have read this book, when I was 18 whew, that would have saved me a whole lot of money a whole lot of stress and a whole lot of time because I can relate so much to Francis I've said many times in my videos before that I'm doing biomedical sciences right now but it's not my right bachelor degree course so I'm gonna do a second bachelor after this I've had so much stress with uni and just figuring out what I do kind of like studying and I still don't know that if I want to do psychology like if that will be what I want to do with like the rest of my life or if that even fits me perfectly and I could relate so much to the journey that Frances was going through and feeling so stressed and so sh about yourself. This book has helped me so much. I read it in January and it it's amazing. It's just Ah, if you feel unsecure about like studying and your life in general, I guess, read this book because it is so relatable and I've never read such an amazing book in my life as this one. Definitely my number one favorite book of 2020 until so far and I doubt that in the next upcoming months I will read a book which will like throw this book off of the number one spot. These are all the books that I wanted to talk to you guys about in today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what is like your favorite book of 2020. 2020 until so far. Do you agree with some of the picks that I showed to you guys today? Let me know. Very curious to hear your guys' opinions. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere on the screen or on the button down below. You guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages because I'm a booktuber. Of course, I have Goodreads, but I also have Instagram, Twitter, an email address, and most importantly, an Etsy shop. And it would mean the world if you would check all of that out. Links are in the description box down below as well. Again, Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!